So how do you set up Google My Business for a client? Well, maybe that client wants you to manage it for them. They want you to add the posts on a regular basis, to, to fill in the keywords, to optimize it regularly with other social medias. And in the end of the day, they want someone to run their Google My Business for them. They've seen the videos, they know what's required, and now they want to manage it, but get someone else to do it for them. And in certainly in this case, I've had several people now ask me to manage it for them and use my expertise for them. And of course, at the moment I'm hiring, so if you wanted to do that, you can contact me on my website below. But how do you release that power, that management of your Google My Business listing? And if you allow someone else to control it, do you then lose the total control of your listing? Well, that's what I'm going to look at today. So I'm Zane from Zanet Design. Welcome to my video. So I've recently had a lot of interest in trying to help people with their Google My Business locations and listings. Uh, maybe you've been one of those uh, and this video is for you where you suddenly have asked me to be involved in managing your Google My Business listing. And at the moment, of course, uh, I'm hiring so you can contact me via the website. But one of the big things that's being asked all the time is, well, how does someone release their administration rights of their Google My Business to someone else? How can I ask, say for instance, how can I run someone else's listing for them? How does that work? Well, today we're going to look at that. So let's dive straight in. So to help you add new users then, the usual way you go is you go to the user section here. You may notice there's a new feature that's just been released now that says add a manager to your business. Invite more users to manage your business profile. So this is a new thing that's come out as well to complement the users. If we were to add a user, of course, we have a few options to consider. So if you were to go here, you can add a user and then you just put in their email and then you then choose which role they have. So whether they're owner, manager or site manager. But before you send that out to them, you may want to know well, what, first of all, is the difference between the owner, the manager and the site manager. And to find out more about that, Google reveals really, it gives you a kind of a breakdown, but in effect, the owner can do everything. And most people that will be running your business for you, if they're running your Google My Business and they're trying to uh, obviously keep it optimized for you, then certainly they would be able to share the ownership. And the reason why that comes into play is because being the owner doesn't mean that you have the total rights to overrule everything because there's also a primary user. So you notice if I go back to here, the primary owner will always be the one who's registered it. And then after then, owners come next, then managers. And then finally, as we saw there, so let's just go back to the users on the roles. Then you've got a site manager, a manager and an owner. But Google do explain what these mean. And in effect, the site manager does about half the things so they can add various attributes and phone numbers and make some changes to the cover photos. But they are quite limited on what they can do. They can't edit logos, for example. They can't change phone numbers or services. So if you're wanting someone to run your business, you certainly would want to consider giving them either owner or manager. And the two differences here is basically manager can actually add more users. So if they're part of a team, they might want others to optimize it for you, or they can also remove business profiles. So they have a little bit more um, control being an owner than a manager, but there's not much between the two. And this is certainly a link that will be useful to look at before you decide on what you want to do. So how does it continue then? Well, that's one way. That's the standard way, which is through users here. But I'm going to look at the other way. So they want us to send an invitation. So let me send this invitation. I'm going to add a user. And there you go. So with a Gmail address, that picks up straight away. And I'm going to give them the full rights because it's myself. It just gives me another option to edit it using a Gmail account. And I'll send the invite. And that's done. So I've been invited. Um, using a different Gmail account. 
And that's all you need to do. If you want me to control uh, your Google My Business for you on your behalf, if we've come to that arrangement, then you just send me an invitation. Now, if you want to see what the invitation looks like, then I'll pull that up for you as well. So there you go. So it receives uh, in my email, comes through, you received an invitation and uh, without being too confused because it's obviously me inviting me, but now I just have to accept the invitation. And now it offers me the opportunity to become an owner of Zanet Design Limited, which if I accept it and accept the terms, And now it gives me this welcoming uh, screen. Would you like to receive communications and personalized tips? Yes, I would. And then you get 80 pounds of ad credit. Now it's just given me a few more things here to consider. Um, visit insights, view your business, download the app. So these are things that I can do personally as part of my plan. But uh, you'll notice here that, uh, that staying connected uh, we've got this new logo just come up as well. There's my £80 worth of free credit. So I get a slightly different layout um, as a new user um, coming through than I would do if I was uh, running this from a slightly different um, point of view. So that's how you add a new user. If I go to users now, you'll see that there's two of us. But notice that the primary owner is Zane Clements, whereas I'm logged in and I'm just known as an owner. And I don't think I can become primary owner. Let's try. So that's a conversation that they would have to agree to beforehand. So you can become a primary owner, but that's not really necessary in this case. So hopefully that's explained how permissions work, how you can get a new user to manage your Google My Business for you. And that's something that's pretty straightforward once you've got their email and they agree to it.